Welcome back to another episode of the Bad Ideas Garage. I am with my EJ22 swapped 1981 Subaru and it was not running very well over the winter to the point that I was not going to be dailying it anymore. And then of course I decided, you know, I'm gonna start just dailying my C43 AMG Ute, which has summer tires on it and a bad alignment. And also, you know, sometimes rains outside. It sometimes rains inside too. So decided that I should probably go back to this and then I just ended up fixing my wife's CX-5. I'll put a link in the description below. Anyways, what we're going to be doing today with my EJ Swap Subaru is I am going to be replacing the thermostat and I'm going to be replacing the TPS sensor. It has been running really oddly and in the winter, it was just not feeling like it was at full power. Sometimes it would idle kind of weird. Uh, every once in a while at stoplights, it would just completely die. And it is a swapped car and, well, you can see that wiring over there. So I was like, mm, before I go and do anything drastic, maybe I should go get some live data. Now I have a Bluetooth OBD reader that is the one that can do like live data and stuff. And that wasn't really cutting it, so I went over to my buddy Daniel's house. Daniel has a really fancy OBD reader, and while we were driving, we noticed that the temperature, even on a hot summer day here in Oregon, we were barely getting to like 170. And then when we were driving around on the highway and such, we are at like 140. So, I mean, there's a mission mode, mode radiator in here and some gigantic fans that were not turning on, but still that just seemed like it was a little bit low and maybe on a cold day that would be causing it to run maybe an open loop um, or like warm up cycle or whatever it was. So that is the reason why I got the near OEM thermostat. Um, it's actually not hard to replace. It's just kind of a pain in the butt because the thermostat on this is actually uh, down on this side of the engine um, where the lower radiator hose goes into the block. Uh, so unfortunately I'll have to, you know, drop some of the radiator fluid to get that, but no big deal. That's pretty straightforward. And then um, the nondescript, very inexpensive TPS sensor. It's just right there. There is a plug and there, I think there's just two of these Phillips screwed overhead. The reason why we're replacing that is because on the OBD reader at full throttle, it was only reporting 55% and like 60% engine load. Um, and throttle, throttle positioning sensor was only at 55%. So um, right here, I'll show you. Right here, this is where the throttle cable goes in. And I've had to adjust this a couple of times to, to get this to fully articulate. Because you can see that there's a physical block that was right there and what was happening is this was only articulating about this much so we ended up um moving this back a little bit and making uh you know this this cable um back out a little bit and that was allowing this to be able to fully articulate but i still wasn't getting full uh engine performance out of it and i think the reason why is because of this. Replacing the TPS is alarmingly easy. It is two screws. With my swap, it's a little more difficult to get to. However, two screws, one connector. And at this point, I realized I probably should have marked where the TPS was so I didn't have to calibrate it later. Whoops. I don't really think there's anything, you know, overly visual that you can see between both of these, but. So there are two different ways to calibrate the TPS if you are dumb dumb like me and forgot to mark it before you pulled it off. The first one is called the seat of the pants test. That's where you put the TPS kind of where you think that it is in the middle of the sweep and hope that it works. That's kind of what I started doing here in this video and I hoped that it was going to work. What I did was I modulated the TPS before screwing it down back and forth just about to where it was touching the physical throttle. Once you put your TPS back in place, you'll be able to feel when it starts to touch. Also, when it's on, you'll be able to move the TPS back and forth and you can see what it does to your idle. Now, of course, there's a real way to use a multimeter and I will put a link to that in the description below that involves checking the voltage when the throttle is all the way open and when it's all the way closed. Have I done that on my exact car? No, no, why would I do that? It's because it runs way better than what it used to and even better, the random times that I used to come to a stoplight and it would just turn off on me or whether it was hot or cold or whatever it was, yeah, it doesn't do that anymore. And it starts on the first fire every single time. So my TPS was definitely bad. I still want to do a calibration at some point, but that is a tomorrow problem. So I'm gonna be replacing this thermostat in my 1981 Subaru with an EJ swap in it. So this is an EJ22 
I took off my um, skid plate and it is just right up there. There we go. Now I have a light. So it is just, uh, yeah, it's just right there. So two 10 mils and um, yeah, I got my little catch pan here to catch the uh, coolant. Here we go. So I let a little bit of this out. So we're gonna, about to find out. Okay, so there is a thermostat that's there and I can see where the aligning tabs are. So basically it goes in just like that. So. Okay. Every other thermostat that I've ever had to replace has always been on the top of the engine, so you don't have to lose any coolant when you take it off, or maybe just a little bit. But Subaru, of course, put it on the very bottom, and let me tell you, this was not very fun whatsoever. Now, you can see in the video that if you're really quick about it and you see where the alignment of the old thermostat is, you can actually pull it out and put it back in really quickly without losing any coolant at all, or should I say very little coolant. However, I monkeyed with it a couple of times because I really wanted to make sure that it was in, so I ended up losing a sizable amount of coolant. So, would I still do this DIY? Yes, absolutely. Was it fun? No. Am I kind of irritated about it? Yes. Am I irritated that I had to recycle the coolant and figure out where in the world you could recycle the coolant in the middle of the Valley of Oregon? Yes. Is it still in my garage? Yes. Am I still going to properly recycle it? Yes, because I'm on an Oregonian, and that's what I do. Oh, and when you're done, please remember to burp your cooling system.